Hi, I'm Shelley Geigel with JNS Hobbies and Crafts, and thanks for stopping by to view another project that we can make together. This uh, tutorial is on making this holiday train. Um, about a year ago, I made one and I liked it and I regret selling it. So I brought it back on out and made it with the classic Christmas traditions paper pad. And uh, it's got filler and it's got a lot of neat things to it. Now I did do both sides of this and in a moment I am going to bring the video camera closer and and do uh, some filming of the front and the back and sideways. I'll be putting a whiteboard behind it so it's easier for you to see it. Um, option with this is if you are going to be displaying yours and you will be having it against a wall so if you don't want to uh, decorate the back you don't have to. Um, I did do both sides on this. The front side is more uh, detailed and elaborate than the back but uh, it is complete and the only thing I don't have on here are any chain or ties to connect them. Um, I left that off uh, since I am going to be uh, turning these around and um, showing it to you. So let's uh, get started on um, taking a look at what we're going to be making today. Okay, um, first thing on our list is what we're going to need equipment wise. Um, you black pen or a, a black sharpie pen um, with the a small tip is recommended. I don't recommend pencil on this and I will show you why in a minute. So a black pen, um, craft knife, maybe a ruler, scissors, and your paper cutter. Um, I think that should be good as far as equipment that you are going to be needing for this and a cutting mat too if you've got your craft knife. Uh, the paper, um, the Designs by Shelley Classic Christmas Traditions. I uh, shortened it up, said DBS. So anytime I say DBS, I'm referring to one of my paper uh, collections. Um, I am using that. That is where on the train you will see a lot of the neat sentiments uh, the bear, the nutcracker, Santa and everything came out of as well as the um, uh, whole pieces that fit across the front of the uh, train in the back. So that's something you will need. Uh, secondly, one of the most important things we are going to need is the train pieces. This is a kit and um, a year ago when I had made this, um, I was using the Kaiser Craft uh, train, uh, MDF train set. It's a pressed board. Uh, it's no longer available, at least I can't find it anywhere. So I was told by a friend to go to uh, this one lady. Uh, she actually has a business and I had patterns uh, from over a year ago. Uh, of this train and I sent it to her and she manipulated it to downsize it a little bit and um, yeah, that's what she does. So at the bottom of the screen you will see uh, the name of her store uh, S.A. Crafters or Saw Crafters 
Uh, the direct link to her store to purchase this is in the comments area right underneath the tutorial. So you can just click right on that and it will bring you to the train set. Um, there will be links on uh, where you can go to purchase the, the Christmas paper pad. And that's in the comments area as well. Um, I usually use those comments areas right under the tutorial to give you direct links or information um, that uh, you need to know about these tutorials. Um, the wheels. Let me grab one of these and I want to say first off on this, I did not glue any of my pieces down and there's a reason for that. Um, if you, you can choose to glue them down or not, but I wanted the ability to be able to next year, if I want to change what's in the, the train car, I can just take it out. Um, anyway, um, the wheels. These are the DBS wheels and these are the gold. Um, across the front of the train there are six wheels. Um, if you are going to be, uh, where are they? If you are going to be decorating only the front, you will uh, need two packs and these are the gold. Um, if you are going to be decorating the back side and want the wheels showing on the back side, uh, three of them. So that's up to you. And you, um, you can choose to use these or use something else that you have. Um, flowers. What I used for flowers. Um, on the main train part, the engine, um, you will see a poinsettia and a lot of people have asked me about this paper poinsettia that I created and um, how I made it. Um, I featured it in my Christmas album tutorial. I will show you exactly how I did this um, if you're interested otherwise you can fast forward through that. Um, that was made with the Heartfelt Creations um, sparkling poinsettia stamp and the matching par uh, sparkling poinsettia die. And the number on the stamp is an HCPC 3680. And on the die, it's an HCD 1766. And that's completely optional. That's just what I used, and um, I used it on the front side only, I believe. Yep, just right there. Um, you can do this however you want. Um, poinsettias um, that I also used were the Petalu textured elements, and I used the red ones. And I used, oh, several of these um, front and back. Um, Petalu also makes the burlapped ones that are the ivory. I did not use any of these. Uh, ivory, but that is an option. I did want to let you know that they have that. Uh, I did use, and I'm going to bring this closer. I've got all my supplies scattered here. Um, the white poinsettias, and I used uh, three, four of them um, on the front of this. It, this is a porcelain poinsettia, and I used Julie Herrick's uh, porcelain poinsettias. I, I love them. You can add the glossy or yeah, you can act, um, actually use glossy accents. I didn't. I did use the Winka Stella on it. Um, and links to her store, uh, her Etsy store, which is called Angel's Path Crafts. Uh, she has them available for purchase. And uh, she makes them in uh, the white and the red and I have several of them and I love them. I, I use them on a lot of my holiday uh, projects. Okay, so that pretty much covers the flowers that I used. Inks, uh, for inking around the edges, I used one color and it is the Memento Olive Grove. It's a very dark green so it worked with everything. That is that. Um, other items that were used uh, were flat back pearls and I used um, flat back pearls in the center of the wheels on all of them. Um, when, um, when I got the, the kit, this kit, when I purchased these, 
Um, she also included for me, she knew I was doing a tutorial because I had actually messaged her that I was looking for this train. Could she create it? I wanted to do a tutorial and that's how we got the ball rolling with her actually making this just uh, for for me to uh, do this project. But she included this a couple of these uh, for me to also take a look at and I did use them and they are great. So you may want to see about getting a couple of these from her. They are wood cutouts and that was used and I'm gonna bring this closer here and that was and I'm gonna take my bird out and that was used right here on the front. Um, Other things that were used. Okay, ribbon. Um, I did use two different types of ribbon. Um, one on the front, and any ribbon's gonna work for you. I can tell you really quick that this is approximately one and a half inches wide. And that is completely up to you what you want to use. Let's move on to what is actually in the train cars and this is um, I have some ideas and suggestions on where you can get this cheap or um, where else you can find it if it's unavailable to you. Okay don't freak out I know this is a huge pile but when I go and buy some of this stuff and I know I have two different uh, uh, two different makings to do one the original and then the tutorial I overspend so you are going to pick and choose what you want to use okay um, the dollar store um, I found uh, these drums and you get several so you can place them around if you want um, you can also find little bells that are decorated for a dollar. In some case, you can find two for a dollar at the dollar store. Um, these uh, gifts and the smaller gift little things. You can find this Merry Christmas and you get more than one um, of these. This is on the back side of the train. Um, another thing that I did put in my train, and this was found at the dollar store, is these uh, flickering effect uh, little tea lights that run on the little battery that's included. Um, there's 240 total hours, so they say. And that's another reason why I didn't glue down a bunch of stuff. I'm going to remove the bird. I do have one in there, and this is what it looks like out of the package if you can see there we go so that is something I do have in there and that is optional what you choose to put in the train cars is up to you if you just want to fill it with uh, maybe a little bit of uh, these and maybe a, a holiday pick or something and then uh, candy uh, you can do what you want. Some of this stuff I got at the dollar store and some of it I, I did have from Michael's Craft Store or Joann's. Um, I don't sell that sort of stuff. I do know the stuff I did get at the dollar store such as stuff like these that I'm going to cut down or just use I got two for a dollar and you really can't go wrong there. So what you choose to purchase is completely up to you. This is from uh, Michaels and um, and the Joann's has it as well. Um, you can find these pine cones at the dollar store or just little doodads um, here and there. So that is completely optional for you. Adhesives. Now the only thing that I ended up using was the Art Glitter Designer Glue with the metal tip and there is no glitter in this that's just the brand name. Uh, this is good for everything from paper to metal to resin, plastics, wood. Uh, that's all I used. I also used some stickles around um, some of my uh, like my poinsettia okay. flower Wink of Stella was used on all the sentiments, uh, the smaller ones, same family, Merry Christmas, 
uh, to make it uh, shimmer. And I also used the Wink of Stella. It's a pin um, on the uh, Julie Herrick's Porcelain uh, Poinsettias. And I think the last thing is your choice. Black spray paint or craft paint. Um, I used uh, the black spray paint and I spray painted my pieces. Um, on the inside of these train cars is the black and the inside of the car pieces as you can say, see is black. It was a lot quicker and cleaner than using craft paint, but craft paint can be used. For the inside of the uh, train cars to stick your picks or glue stuff down to, um, you can use styrofoam. I'm, this is a uh, recycled styrofoam. Um, styrofoam balls work good too. So um, that is uh, something that you might consider. If you don't want to use them, don't. Um, but uh, they stay in better with the styrofoam. Let's go on to... Um, this next part, really quick, how I made those embossed uh, flowers with um, the Heartfelt Creations Sparkling Poinsettia uh, collection. You will need a piece of white cardstock. So if you are not interested in knowing how I did this, go ahead and fast forward to the next part. Okay, this is my flower. And as you can see, it's embossed and it's sparkly. And along with the embossing, stickles was used. Um, clear embossing ink is what I used first. This is by uh, Ranger. And I'm going to get my stamp out here. And the, I'm going to cut this sheet down. Okay, now I think we're ready. I think I have my tray. My heat gun is here. Okay, first things first, let's get your clear embossing ink out. And you are just going to put a coating over this, like so. You are going to need, I used gold embossing powder. So I am just going to plop that over. And you will not be able to see anything at this point. I'm going to just stick this right on over this tray here. And I am going to apply my gold. And the tray is for the excess so that I can get it back in the jar, what's not used. So I'm just going to tip this and tap off the excess. And the rest of this goes back in the jar. I'm going to plug in my heat gun. All right. Get this heated up here. And you're just going to go over the image. And I think that. It all took here. Let's take a look. Looks good to me. It's on there. It's not coming off. Okay. The next thing that you're going to need, of course, is your die cutter. Okay. And you're going to need um, your die. You can place a piece of tape to hold your die plate in place. But me, I'm just going to go for it. Now I'm going to run it through the die cutter. Alrighty. So now all you do is you just pop your cutouts and you have the poinsettia pieces. And all you do next is start inking around uh, your flower. And uh, let me find one. Not sure if I'm using the right dauber or not. But you can just start inking around in there. When the flower was completely inked, that's where I came in with the stickles to emphasize around the edges. And that's all I did was go around and kind of put something in the middle. I'm 
just all the way around this. And as you can see, ah, can you see? Um, and once you get a darker uh, color base on there, it, it all ends up looking like the flower that I showed you here. And I'll bring it up closer so you can see the embossing and you can see uh, how that worked. Okay, let's move on to putting our, uh, the first steps on making this train. Let's get into our pieces. There are no directions um, to this. You don't need them. It's a pretty simple process. Uh, before you paint it, we are going to trace um, the pieces out onto the paper. Um, the reason why I said not to use pencil is because I found out when I was tracing onto the paper with the pencil, the lead gets against the side of your thing and it takes forever to try and erase it before you put your craft paint or your spray paint on and it, it, it just made more sense to use a black pen and and go with it like that. I have all the train pieces laid out. Let's make sure that you have everything and we're going to start with the engine and then we will move uh, to the ca train cars. Um, you'll have two of these so set these off to the side. We're going to work with those first. You will notice that you will have a total of six, I think, yeah, six of these shapes. Okay. You will have only one of these smaller ones, such as this. This goes to the engine. I want you to grab two of these for now. Put them with that. The rest of these set off to the side. Let's grab our paper pad. Let's uh, get into our paper pad. The first page is this. Let's remove it. The first thing that we're going to do is trace out uh, what we need on, on the train car. So if you were to place your uh, first thing, um, your first piece, I have my train going this way. Um, for my front view. If you want your front view going this way, then you're going to turn it around such at that. So just line up the top and the sides and uh, start tracing around. Now when you get to this part up here, you don't need to trace up and around because this part is black. Just continue going around like so. Now let's cut out our piece. This is what you should have. Now grab one of your wagon wheels, place it down like so where the bottom meets here. You are going to have some uh, of your paper showing over here and of here of course but we can uh, fix that in a moment. All we are going to do is from um, this point right here, and I am going to zoom in if I can. There. The wagon wheel right like this. Okay. I'm at this point here where it's cut off. I am just going to trace all the way around this wheel. And I'm going to do the same on this side. sure that my pen works. Okay. I am going to cut all the way around to get these round wheels out. This is what you should have. Let's go ahead and place it right there all the way on there and this is how it should look. This part's going to be all black 
and then the wheel does fit right on top of it. This side, as far as uh, the pattern, is done. On the other side, um, you are going to just uh, flip this over, bring this down here. Now you can just use this as your pattern if you'd like, or you can do the same thing you just did. Um, the green is going to be on the outside, that's why I flipped this over. So. Uh, I'm going to trace around this, and I'm going to cut it out. Okay, so set off these to the side. Those are done for this. This can be set off to the side to get ready to paint. The small piece that looks like this, set that off to the side. It's going to be done in black. Uh, these two, the leftover paper that we just had, <clears throat> we are going to put this down and you can do this two different ways. Um, you can grab into a second, uh, the second paper pad. You can definitely place it over here and cut around so that is on your back side. You can move this up here so that that shows on the front side. So you are not going to accommodate for the notches. We're not going to have the notches in our paper. So I'm lining up the corner of this to the corner of this paper. And I'm just going to draw a line. And this is where your paper cutter uh, comes in handy for cutting straight lines. Um, I am not good at cutting straight lines, so this is where it's going to go for me. So there is my first one. It's going to be a square, and I'm going to use my paper cutter for that. Um, here is another one. I'm just going to do this, and I am going to do the same thing here. This is what I have, and the idea of this is to make sure that the notches stay clear, and this is fitting good. That is done. I'm going to put this with the other cutouts. This one fits, and that's good. That goes on the other one. Okay, these are ready to get painted. I am going to do it all at once, so I'm going to set this off to the side. The leftover scraps, uh, stick them in reserves until we are done with the project in case you need it. Let's grab these. We're now going to work on the, the second train card here. Uh, this is the middle piece of the train that I chose for the middle. Put these two off to the side. Um, you will have two of these. One is for this piece, so this one goes with the other train car. You will have four of these. They are di identical. Two are for this, and the other two go to the other train car. Okay, let's get our paper. In your paper pack, you will open up and you will find the striped Page. It also has the gold on the other side, and we are going to remove that one. We are going to do uh, the almost the identical thing, except for we are not going to trace around the wheels. At this point, when you come down here, we're just going to do a straight across cut, and, and that's where the paper cutter comes in handy. So I'm going to take this corner here to this corner to save paper and line up the top across the edge there and I am going to trace this. Again, I'm not going to trace around there. I'm just going to go in between. And now I am going to place this on my paper cutter. This is what you should have. Let's see how this works. And this is how it should fit, right like that. So, using this, or you can use this to trace again, either or, we're going to set this off to the side. So, I am going to place this up on here, and I'm going to trace around again. 
Now on the back side of mine, um, this was the up and down stripes. On the back side, I actually went side to side like that. So if you would like a different pattern on the back, you can go like that. But I'm going to keep this one all the same. So here I go. Trace around and cut it out. And I'm going to make sure that <clears throat> this fits. And it does. So I'm going to set this off to the side. These two pieces can go in our pile with the engine so that uh, we know that it's complete and it just needs painting. We're first going to get our pattern, our main paper cut out, and then while uh, our paint is drying, then we'll move into um, getting some of the other pieces out. Okay, um, the bottom piece, which looks like this, stick it off into the pile to be painted. And now we have these. Let's get our paper for that. Now on mine, I actually used a different pattern paper for the front and the back. If you want to use the same paper uh, to go all the way around, you can. I just found that giving it a different color kind of breaks it up, so we're going to get into these. In your paper pack, you will find this on the back side, looks like this. And uh, <clears throat> we are going to, it's this one here, so I'm going to use as little paper as possible and bring it down to the corner. And all I'm going to do is trace around. And remember, we don't trace around the notches. We leave that out of there. And now I am going to just cut out that square rectangle actually. Okay, I'm going to stick this off to the side for now. I don't need that. And I'm going to check to make sure that I fit. And I do, and I can see my notches. We're going to put this off to the side. And this can actually go in for painting now. Let's get the paper we need for this. In your paper pack, you will find this sheet. On the other side is this. We are going to do the same thing that we did before. Um, making sure we don't cut into anything over here yet because we do need that uh, for uh, the decoration. So I'm just going to line it up at the corner, trace around it, and cut this out. Okay, let's make sure this works and my notches are visible. Okay, this can go off to the side. This goes in for painting and let's stick this into our reserves. Okay, we are on the last train car and you can just take this piece and put it in for painting. That's the bottom piece. Let's get our paper for this. In your paper pack, you will find this on the other side is like this. So uh, looking at it with the, the bows being in the right direction, I'm just going to bring this right on down here. And again, we won't be needing to, um, we won't be needing to cut out the wheels. So I'm just going to line this right up to where the bottom of the car meets the bottom of the paper. And I'm just going to trace around this and cut it out. Okay. <clears throat> I got my first one here. And it fits. Uh, this can go in for painting. This goes off to the side. And you can either use this as your pattern or you can use the train car. And we are just going to trace around it and do the same. Alrighty. I'm going to stick this off into the reserve pile and check to make sure that I'm fitting. And I am. This goes over here and this goes in for the pile for painting. Alright, in your reserves you should have a piece of this and all I'm going to do is put this down 
and I'm going to trace around it like we've done before, ignoring the notches. And I'm going to cut that out. I'm going to check and make sure I'm fitting. And I do. This goes off here. This goes in for painting. And the last one. In your paper pack, you will have this page on the back looks like this. Um, we are going to get after this. However, the first thing we want to do is carefully use our paper cutter and cut a strip, these sentiments, and then you'll cut a strip, that, and then so forth. And we'll put those in our reserves. And we will be cutting to get that okay. out. Okay. I have my um, sentiment right here. I'm going to set that off to the side. Uh, if you were confused when I said how to cut it, uh, this is how I meant. Just cut these off in strips. These are some of the excess panels, and we will be using almost all of this, so let's put it in our reserve. Now, to get this to fit, this should be almost a fit. You will notice, and you may have, where you can see some of this. Once we paint this black, it does not matter anymore. You won't be able to see anything. But what we want to do at this point is once you have it on there like this, where the top meets the top, flip it over, line it back up, and what you are going to do is just put a line and let's cut this down. This is the smaller leftover piece, and all we want out of this is this piece going across. And we, so we are going to cut straight across right above the green line. Okay, the piece we want is the bottom piece. This can be set off to the side. We are going to apply some glue down here, and we are going to just glue it right on top of that so that it matches up, as you can see, if I can get this straight for you. There we go. It matches up and you really can't see the line. So then when it's placed on this, it will fit. So let's do that. Get my glue out here. Okay. I better check my work here, and that does fit. So this goes off over here, this goes in for painting, and the rest of the decorating we will do shortly. <clears throat> I'm going to bring the pieces out, and um, I want to show you, I've already got mine all painted. Now with me using the uh, spray paint, instead of just getting around the wheels area and just this and around the edges, I ended up just spraying all my pieces. It was so easy. Uh, if you are using craft paints, I'm going to show you the main points so you don't have to do black in here if you don't want to. So the main points uh, using craft paint and hand painting is you are going to get all the way around the edges and this whole thing here is going to be black painted. Again, all the edges around is going to be painted. The back side, you're going to paint that whole thing. Um, you are going to where we had those cut out of the wheels, the paper round things, everything in this is going to be black as well. And that's going to be the same thing. The inside of the train is all black, and then the outside just this, and I'm making sure you get the edges. For all of these weird pieces that actually have the cutouts in it, the bottom, uh, you can choose just to paint all of the, if you're using craft paints, uh, all of the bottom, or it really doesn't, or the bottom of the train. It really doesn't matter because you are going to be putting something in there. So if you aren't putting anything in your train car, uh, you'll want to do it all black, of course. 
all in all the bottom pieces. These pieces, again, um, you will want to make sure you get around your edges here. And on one side, it's going to be completely black because that's the inside. Um, I did not decorate on the inside. Uh, unless you're going to be having so much in your, your train car that you won't see it, then of course you don't have to. Uh, spray paints, just any spray paint. I am using a gloss. It didn't seem to really even matter mostly on mine. kind of came out matted looking, um, as you can see, but this is absolutely fine. And I've got sparkles on it. Okay. Okay, I have all my pieces to the engine and the two cars. I am going to take uh, the pieces that go to each and just kind of lay it on top of there. I'm going to put these off to the side. Okay, real quick, optional. And I did mention this, and I do want to use it. Before we glue this down, you'll want to go on all of your pieces around the edges if you can see any of the white. And I chose green even on the other ones. And we are going to do that. I just noticed. I almost forgot. So go around all your pieces, even your pieces over here. And then we're going to start gluing these down. Okay, all we're going to do with these is... Um, that will be on the inside of that. Okay, you'll want to set these out so we do this right. Um, we're just going to start gluing these down. We're um, lining them up and gluing um, them down. I am using this glue and uh, you will glue that down and then this piece of course just gets set off to the side. Whoops! And I'm going to glue this one down and then I'm going to glue this one down. So let's do that. Okay, so I have gone ahead and glued everything down. And before we move on, and I did ink around the edges before we move on, this is how your pieces should look. We are going to grab our next set. And put that off there, keep them separated. And we're going to do the same thing is we are going to ink around the edges, we are going to glue these all down, and then we're going to do the same for this. Really quick, um, when you get to this, um, you know, on these it really doesn't matter which way you go, but I want to do tell you the upside rim is the one without the notch. So when you do place this, the notches are always down and to the sides. Okay, I have all my pieces glued down and the edges are inked. Um, one thing that you may have noticed on these, flip it over, you will see a hole. Um, what you can do is either punch the hole through if you are going to be stringing yours together. If you're not ever going to be stringing yours together, you don't have to punch through the hole. Um, you can start it with your little craft knife, just get a big enough hole in there. Um, or if you have already a puncher that will do it, you can punch through really quick. And then if you need to ink around the edges there, you can. In most cases, it will just punch back through if you poke it through. So you will want to do that on all the pieces. Uh, before we even begin to think about assembly, this is where your craft knife uh, might come in handy. If you are too long on the sides, um, you'll probably want to just do a little trimming. Um, I'm not really bad at all, so I'm not going to worry about mine. Um, <clears throat> the ones to, you really need to look out for are these pieces with the, the little hinges. If you flip it over and you see that it is just hanging way too far over, um, that there's a lip, you'll want to trim that back in order to make sure that this piece can fit flush against um, 
against uh, this piece when it goes in. If there's too much of a lip, it's not going to get in all the way. So let's uh, go ahead and, and clean up the, around the edges if we need to. Okay, the next step is uh, we're going to start gluing our wheels down. I'm going to glue the wheels down to the front side, and since I am decorating the back side, I will be doing that. So if you notice, the only one that has the full black cutout is the engine, and then these have the smaller, and that is just fine. Um, it works out well. So just add some glue to the back. This is where the metal tip really comes in to uh, work really well and you're just going to apply some glue. And you definitely want to use a glue that is going to dry clear in case you get too much glue and it gobs out. I will show you what I usually do for overage of glue because it happens. Alright, so you just, what you want to do for this is when you're placing it down, make sure that your thumb your finger is at the bottom of the wood. You don't want a lopsided. So as long as your finger's down there and you push this down, you know the wheel isn't going to be farther out hanging than, than this. So, um, okay. What I do when I get seepage like that, and it's sometimes it's hard to clean up, is I grab a piece of scrap paper and I just take it right off like that. I just kind of use the paper to uh, get it off for me, to scrape the excess. Okay, so I'm going to glue these down. When it comes time for this one, I will do the same thing. Uh, these wheels are a little closer together. So what I do is, is you can make sure that you can either have them touching if you want or not. Uh, mine are touching, so, and it gets glued down. Just like that, again, remember putting your finger down here, making sure the, the wood and the wheel are flush uh, the same. Um, so that one side of your wheel isn't down like this and it's going to cause a lopsided. So that's how I do that. And we're going to do it on all the wheels. Okay. I am going, we're going to work by um, train car by train card. I got all my wheels on. I'm going to keep all those pieces together. I've got these pieces together. Uh, this is going to be the back side. I'll get to that shortly. Let's work on getting the front. Okay, in your reserves you will find this. Um, what we want to do is, from the bottom of this, measure up about an inch and a half and cut it. Okay, stick this side off to the side. Uh, we, you can use your craft knife. We are going to cut out and around in there, or you can use your scissors. Whatever is easiest for you. I'm just going to go right on in with my scissors and fussy cut all the way to bring this white piece out of there. After I was done uh, cutting out the inside there, um, I did go around with the Olive Grove ink and I am going to go around the edges here. Now I need to get my next piece. In your paper pack you will have another one of these. Uh, let's go ahead and cut this part out. We do need this piece. So I've cut this trim piece out because we do need to have this trim and I'm going to put all of this in reserves. Uh, let's go ahead and cut these sides out. I had already started. And all we are going to do at this point is um, we are going to cut around. To be make sure that you do this right, the best way is, and you can use your paper cutter, is to go ahead and just cut that part off. What we are trying to do is get it to where the bear is going to be partially shown. So as long as you leave enough room on the sides and um, just kind of eyeball this and cut up from here. There's one side. And then it's easier to 
can get this cut and to place it. <clears throat> and you don't need to measure unless you really need to. Uh, what we're trying to do is get it to where it is um, like this. Part of his hat is going to be behind. Part of the bear will be cut off. So, um, let's go ahead and cut him. Let's start off about where his paws are to see if we're going to fit here. Because we do have um, stuff that's going to go around the bottom, you aren't going to see this part. So, if you have it sitting to where it looks like this, right up right below his paws there you will be just fine so let's grab some glue this is the part you don't have to be real persnicky about we can always trim this up if needed whoops and I think I'll zoom in And he will uh, get placed right here if we need to cut him down more, which I think I do. So long as you don't cut him completely off, is he going to fit? He will fit like that. Okay, stick this off to the side. I'm going to wipe off that glue for now. Let's get the little piece that goes up here. In your paper pack, you will find this, and we are going to measure from this side over. What we're looking to get is this strip. So if you measure over this way, six and seven eighths, um, we are going to need that much uh, of a piece. Uh, the best way that I can tell you to do this, because we do want our flower here, we don't want to cut it off is you can use your ruler six and seven eighths and make a mark right like this at the end whoops right there this pen's out of ink that's why I grabbed the other make a mark right there. So I know that when I'm cutting along here and along this strip, this is how far I need to go over. So, and it would help if I had my glasses on. So this is one of the main pieces that we need on the front. I know that we need to get the up here. We are coming to that. Grab this back out, and we are just going to cut straight across at this point. All we're using this for is a border and some color, and then we will measure this up to what we need. And this is the piece that does go across. I am going to add some ink there. Okay, now across the top here, um, whoops, I need to get that straight and ink it. Okay, across the top here, what you're going to do, and it's going to have a little green on the top and a little green here, but what we're going to do is just kind of come on over here with our pen, make a mark. And now let's just cut that. And we're going to glue that right on down. Okay, this piece here is the one that's going to lay across here. This piece can now be glued down. And this is all just a matter of layering. 
and we're just going to come right up like this. Place that down. This piece here is going to lay just like this. Now, if one thing about this is I think on this one I did trim this up just a hair right underneath the thing to make it fit better. There we are going to glue that down just like this. Okay, so all I'm going to do now is flip that over and trim this off. And you can use your scissors or you can use your thing. If you still have wet glue, you'll want to use your scissors. So there is that, and that should be down. Now, in your reserves, you will find this piece. I'm going to go ahead and cut mine out to start. This is what you should have. And all we are going to do is cut out this. We are going to cut up and around over the postcards and get that out of there. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. This is what you should have. And all we are going to do is bring the edge of this right to where the hole is. And we are going to glue that straight across. Okay, I am going to move this out of the way. Put some glue right here. And this one gets centered like so. And this one goes on the other one. Okay, let's move on. I'm going to get my flowers all ready and my sentiments ready to go here. Um, we do want the family. And there is another sentiment, one that says Merry Christmas. And we're going to get those out. So. There's family. Put these back. Put those off to the side. I'm going to need to get into those shortly. And we want Merry Christmas. Okay, I got this poinsettia ready to go. I'm going to get the Julie Herrick's um, porcelain poinsettia ready to go. And then I'm going to put some filler of some of the things I got from the dollar store in Michael's around there. I'm going to go ahead and place the porcelain poinsettia. This is a good time for a hot glue gun. And I'm just going to put this right like this. Actually, I'm going to turn it. It's going to go right like this. My next flower is this one, and it goes right like this, right there. Now I am going to grab my Merry Christmas goes first, and that gets placed right like this. And it's right over the ridge of this wheel. And it's slightly slanted up, and the edge does go over the side. <clears throat> and can pull it up just a little bit more than that because I want to be able to get my other one in here right like that and then there's this one where it lays right like this and I got something red on this I'm gonna have to get my tweezers out Okay, so there's that. I am going to add a few little extra things here. Now, one thing I'm going to start doing on some of these picks is grabbing some of the decorations 
um, the balls and other things um, off it. Again, it's completely optional what you would, would like to do. So it's all according to your own taste. So you do not even have to do this if you don't want to. If you have some poinsettia leaves or whatever, you can tuck some back behind here, which I am going to do to give a little bit of greenery. If you don't have poinsettia leaves, it's perfectly fine. You can use regular leaves to give it a little greenery color. And that's all I'm going to do. Now, for these, um, I'm just going to add a little hot glue, and you've seen me do it before, I just kind of uh, take these, um, in other tutorials at least, um, I just take these and add some glue and tuck them back behind, and that's all there is to stuff like that. And I'm going to add a couple right back down through here. And then I'm going to remove any glue strings that are showing. And you can use as little or as much or none. I am just going to lift that right on up and stick that in there. And let's see, the only thing left to do on this is to wrap the uh, ribbon here and I will do that right before assembly. This front piece is done for now, so I'm going to stick that off to the side and grab this piece. In your paper pack, you will find this sheet. Take it out. This is where we get a lot of the bare cutouts. Um, for that as well as we are going to need one of these so um, I am just really quickly and I'm going to stick this off to the side while I'm getting into this this will be for the the middle car uh, stick this off with this really quick and I am going to cut out, I'm just going to go straight across here, put this back in reserves. Put this in reserves. And now we are going to cut the bear out on this one and this one. One of these bears we are going to stick off to the side for this. And this bear is going to be for back here. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, I got my bear cut out. Now, in reserves, you will find a long strip like this. We are going to go ahead and take this, this top strip and the candy cane strip and cut okay, those. Okay, the bear border goes back in reserves. This Merry Christmas piece, we are just going to measure enough to go across. what we need. You can use your ruler for that. And set this off to the side. This goes back in your reserves. And we do have another piece for this. Okay, this piece actually runs right along the top here, so we are going to measure enough. And I was I just went like this, just like that. And I am going to ink the edges. This side goes back in reserves. Now, in your reserves, you will find this piece where you cut off. There is a narrow piece like this 
as you can see this side's wider there's narrow and we're just going to start off by just hand cutting this off I have ink on this so I am going to trim it now as far as this went all I did here was to give it a little more color and, and whatnot um, is do like this so I just came right on over like this figured out how much in between I needed here and I'm going to measure because we're going to cut this down about three inches so measure over three inches and cut it this piece is going to fit just like this not all the way to the top and I will tell you if you'd like to know there's not a whole lot of measuring in this uh, thing you really can't do um, wrong maybe I just come down a quarter of an inch and place it okay now you can go ahead and uh, glue this down the Merry Christmas on top okay uh, before we place the bear down if you want to place it like that you can but we do have to get this glued down first um, on the original one on the back side I did have a cutout and then the bear goes on top so I am gonna grab that unless you are fine with with it looking like that but I did want to put something in the background in your paper pack you will find this sheet this was one of the cutouts on the back side is this but we had already cut it out so we are going to grab the second sheet and cut this out alrighty so I cut this out and I inked the edges this is ready to be placed down and this just goes the there is a green bow in there and the green bow goes up. I did not cut out the inside of the wreath because the bear ends up being placed right there. Whoops, I got a piece of stuff. And he just gets placed right let's see here there down far enough that he covers and the candy canes are still shown and there's nothing underneath so that's that's how he was done um, let's go ahead and I'm going to grab one of Julie Herrick's uh, poinsettias as well as the red for the back and I do need to get a couple sentiments Okay, in our sentiments reserve, we want family traditions. Put that back. And we want Merry Christmas. And then these go back in reserves. Um, we do need to get our pearls down. It's probably best we get those down first before we start doing the sentiments. And then I'm going to check the front side and make sure the glue has dried on what I did there. Okay, first things first. Um, Julie Herrick's um, of Angel Path Crafts. Her thing goes here and it goes right by his foot, just like this. The red burlap one gets placed. right there in the back make sure that's down our first sentiment will be placed right like this and you can use hot glue or you can use this glue I'm just going to use this glue And then the Merry Christmas one goes <clears throat> right underneath, halfway on there. Just like that. 
And the only thing left to do is wrap the little gold ribbon around this and we're going to hold off from doing that. Um, we're going to let this sit off to the side and dry first um, before we assemble it. Okay, while these are drying, we are going to set off all the pieces that go to the first part off to the side. Let's grab this one. <clears throat> put the back side mm -hmm. off to the side. We will put these off to the side and we are going to work with this one. We do need to get our border. In your reserves you will have this piece and we are just going to bring the corner of this up all the way over and me, I'm just going to snip what I need. If you would like to measure yours to get an exact fit, you can go ahead and do that. And I do need to curve my side there. And now all I'm going to do is glue that down. Now, grab this piece and from the bottom measure up, oh, about a half inch and make a mark and we are going to cut it straight across. Now this does get placed over the hole but we do not glue it down so that you can still get your ribbon. Um, you won't put glue right underneath here where the hole is because you are going to need to be able to put a ribbon through if you are going to be attaching yours. So um, the best way to do this that I did it was I am just going to put glue on half of this on the back like so and then I'm going to place it right on top of that wheel at an angle and glue that down okay Next comes the bear, and he just sits right up on top of the wheel there. We do not glue down his foot because we do need to be able to slide this back and behind. Um, we will be putting glue back here, though. And the, boot, the bear just sits right like this. Okay, let's grab this piece really now, quick. Now, in your reserves, you will have these cuts. Um, what you want to do is, is just kind of find this to where it will fit, if it fits. If this one doesn't work for you, then you are going to grab another sheet. Actually, I have a square one right here. And all I'm going to do is cut it around it. And what I do is I just kind of slide my my scissors underneath that scroll work so it still will fit. And you can have some underneath it if you'd like. But I, what I did was the only part that is touching is um, the edges. Whoops. Underneath here, the edges around here is what gets uh, the glue on it to uh, put this down. So trim yours up to fit right inside of there. And I'm going to finish trimming mine up so I can see it needs it. Okay, and so by the time you're done, if you place this over, it should look good. We do need in our sentiments the Happy Holidays. And don't glue this down yet. So we do need to slip this in there. And this just gets placed right over here and you can trim down that side if you need to. But we are going to end up putting glue on this and it gets mounted right in the middle there. So I am going to put my whoops, I didn't need that much. I think you can see this okay. 
Maybe I should zoom in. <clears throat> and now this is going to be glued down right on top. And I'm just going to get the edges really lightly with the glue. And I'm going to place this right like that and then I'm just going to make sure that it's even and if you get that glue seepage this is where one of these scrap pieces really come into working good because it will clean it right up okay so mine is done <clears throat> this gets slid right like this the uh, scroll sits on the top of the wheel I'm going to apply my glue to the whole, the back of this whole thing now, mm -hmm. making sure I do get some of the scroll so that it gets down good. Okay, behind him, and it comes over like so, and I'm going to pull this up so I can see if I'm straight. And where did my little piece go? And I'm just going to add a glue seepage just like that. Let's get the piece that says Christmas and get that on there. And I can back this out now. In your paper pack, <clears throat> or not in the paper pack, but in your reserves, you will have this sheet. What we are looking to get is this Christmas. And all I did to get that out is I first just cut by hand to get this gray piece out. Okay. This is real simple um, because if I start here, it will give me the curve I need. So here we go. I'm just going to cut right underneath the letters there and kind of curve it around like that. Then all I did was follow the curve here. And I think you can see that. And then where it comes to right about here, I use the curve of that. And then I just followed it around. And that's how it was done. This gets placed right here over the wheel. So I am going to get my glue. I'm going to start right here actually. And that's what it should look like. I also had some flat back pearls to go in the center of the wheel. And we're going to glue those down. And I did have uh, one of Julie Herrick's uh, Angel's Path Crafts, one of her poinsettias. And that got put right there at the corner. And I had one of these burlap ones, and that just fit right like that. And then I had two Christmas gifts. One, whoops, one gets glued right here, and it's completely optional, remember? So whatever you choose to do, there's one. And here's the other. And I've left enough room away from the little hole here to tie it off, to connect them. Okay, this is done. Let's set this off to the side. We're going to set these off to the side with it. These are the other pieces while that dries. <clears throat> 
Now this is for the back. And this was real simple. I used one of these uh, Merry Christmas deals from the uh, dollar store. And all I did there was, first I tried to brush off some of the extra glitter, but this just gets glued down right like this. And then of course we have two flat back pearls to put on there. So that is what I'm going to do. Glue these down and glue that down. Let's stick this off to the side with the other middle piece. While that glues uh, drying, we are going to move on to these last pieces to decorate. This is pretty easy. I need one of my burlap poinsettias. We are going to need the sentiment jingle bells. We're going to need one of Julie Herrick's uh, porcelain poinsettias. We are going to need some of these and some other things that you might like to do. Also, the Sentiment Seasons Greetings we will need. Two flat back pearls, and we do need to get the piece that goes across here, and we do need the Santa. Okay, I think I got everything that's needed. Uh, the two sentiments, I will grab some more of those. My flowers, two flat back pearls. I got my bow. Uh, we are going to cut the Santa out now. And we're just going to cut all the way around him. And then in your reserves, um, we did have a 6x6 six six panel that we had cut into. On the back, you will find this. We are going to cut that out as well. Okay, in your reserve, um, you will find this. Uh, we are going to turn this, measure over one and a half inches and cut it. Okay, looking at it like this, measure over six and five eighths and cut it. We're going to go ahead and glue this down now. Um, your edges, as far as rounding them, um, just you can go like this, press it down, flip it over like so and you can definitely take your pen and draw like so before you do anything if that helps and then glue it down so that is what I've done you can do or you can leave it squared off but you will be able to see the overhang from the other side so, okay. Now, um, as far as this goes, this is going to be glued down like this. If you don't like this little flap up in the air, I did remove mine. Um, all I did was cut up and around the thing. I wanted it so it was just those two sides. So I'm going to glue this down. And then we're going to, and I did center that. And then what we are going to do is grab our Santa. Now, one thing about Santa is we could have put it, layered it, the wheel over him, but we did not. Uh, place your Santa down, showing a little bit of your paper over here still. Go like this, pinch it so you can see where the curve is. And right underneath his staff, you can snip it. We're going to put a staff in there, but um, for now, all we're going to do is cut where you see that the wheel is. And let's glue this part down. And he should fit. If when you were cutting the staff, if he just didn't work out right, don't worry about the staff. You can just kind of cut it off and he can be holding that. But 
if you want the staff, um, you can definitely move them down a little, uh, glue the pieces and to get that back in there. And I'm not going to worry about the staff. Okay, next thing uh, we need to do is your bow. Your bow needs to be glued down, and I do like using hot glue for this. And you just kind of stick it right like this. And then you can always pop your bow up a little better there. Um, your flat back pearls. Um, this one, weight, we do have to put a sentiment actually down first. And that is the season's greetings. Okay. And that just halfway on that hole, just put that down. Then you are going to layer your pearl over it. Like so. Uh, Julie, or uh, first of all, let's grab this. Um, the jingle bells. And that just slides right up underneath this border. I am going to layer some stuff underneath so you don't want to glue your leaves down just yet. And then Julie's poinsettia gets stuck right like that. And then you can always arrange those. Uh, I am going to start adding some of these underneath sticking out this way and that way. I'm going to add one more piece. I may need more glue on that. I think I do. Yeah, I do. Okay. Um, while I'm waiting for the flatback pearls to dry and... Um, everything I am going to stick this off to the side and then I'm going to grab this piece right here okay for the back all you need is your flat back pearls you will need the blue Merry Christmas sentiment um, I'm using one of uh, the porcelain white poinsettias and I have a bow and I already glued that down so I am going to add glue to that and put that down. And you can arrange these crinkly or however you want. And um, all you do with the, my hands, i got to wash them, the blue sentiment. <clears throat> Is just like that and the back is um, done so that I'm gonna let these dry we are gonna move on to assembly okay I did forget one thing and I knew that that would happen Christmas morning sentiment clip that right on out Christmas morning sentiment goes right here so all I did was kind of do a curve and it should fit the bear like so and we're going to glue that down just like that no harm done and that is that let's start assembling let's grab our engine we're ready to assemble this um, really quick grab your it's easiest to do this now but grab some of your ribbon 
Um, on my original one, I did use hot glue to tack this down, and um, I did kind of make a mess on mine, and I had to clean it up, but I'm going to use a white glue, and uh, you can use a clip to try and hold that down there. These type of clips work really well to hold it while it glues. Um, if you don't have that, a uh, paper clip uh, works really well as a uh, paper clip. Just make sure you don't scratch your paint. If you do, you'll have to touch it up with maybe a felt marker or something. But uh, I start from the inside here. Right there. And then all I do at this point is just wrap the, the ribbon up and around the stack. Okay, I am going to grab my back side here and I'm just going to flip it over like this. This is the bottom piece. Um, I am going to have this showing towards the front so it's going to fit like this. Um, all I did was uh, put my glue that dries clear on all the notches here and going down the sides. I did put a little here where the notches uh, go in because we don't see that. And you're just going to fit that right on in. And then you can use um, you can use a uh, something to clean it up, the glue. Uh, here is the back side and make sure your picture is facing out. And I'm going to do this for this entire piece, just like I did the other one. A little glue here and there, and then I'll clean up anything um, that shows. And this is where the notch here is going to go in, and I am going to put some glue. And I'm going to hit the other side because I'm going to put the front of the train on there. And you just kind of slide it together. And um, I really like uh, her pieces because they do fit in perfect without any struggle. So I've got that. Now all I have to do is put this on, and this should slide right on there. So I'm going to come over here so I can see what I'm doing. Whoops, mine wasn't done drying here. That's okay. I'm just going to clip that back. Okay. And I'm just going to slide this right on top there, there. and that is on. And once you find the holes and it's on, all you have to do now is just hold it for a moment like this. And you can even set your uh, train up and if you hold on to it, it'll stay together, of course. And um, just kind of hold it there for a moment. Okay, mine is glowing, or drying. I'm going to set that off to the side. Yours should stay upright as well. We are going to do the same thing with these pieces. And this is the larger one is the bottom. So let's go ahead and put our glue around the edges and um, start uh, whoops, start fitting these together like we did. And I like to start with the back. Got all the glue on this. And I'm just going to slide that right there and let it hold. And now I'm going to put the glue around this side. Got my glue on. Just going to stick it right there. And now for the bottom piece, a glue all the way around there. 
bottom piece has glue. And I'm just going to carefully move this right like that. And now it's time to put the top on, or the front side on there, and there. And that is together. I'm going to set that off to the side. Let's do our final pieces. I've got all of mine together. This is a good time to grab a piece of scratch paper. And that's where you can clean up some of this glue if you have any seepage while this is gluing together. And we'll just go around and clean that up and then we are going to get to um, filling these. After about 15 minutes and your train has uh, pieces have glued together, uh, this is where the styrofoam um, comes in handy. I'm using, um, I cut some up and I'm just going to glue this down. This train's going on, oh my cat is crazy, he's going nuts. Um, <clears throat> this one I am going to glue down everything. Uh, because it is going on display down at the hobby store. So I am just going to add glue to the bottom of my styrofoam and you'll want to make sure that yours fits. And I'm just going to put the styrofoam in each one and then I'm going to start putting my um, filler in there. Now I started putting mine in there but uh, for the sentiment cards uh, that I had poking up in your reserves you will find this so let's go ahead and divide this uh, these two just get backed like this so I'm just gonna these are my paper line is a uh, pretty heavy paperweight so these will stand up um, so I'm just going to apply glue to the back of one of these and this is the gold one and I am just going to mount this right over it these two get done the same way. Now on the back of this one, um, in your paper pack, the very last page, uh, I did cut out this. So let's cut that one out. I did cut off the top and round it off. And this just gets placed right here with some glue. Before you glue it down, make sure that it's upright. These are the last ones that you'll be placing in here. Okay, so I've got everything in there now. All you do is just stick them in to what you like and just keep adding. But uh, this is uh, the front of the train going around and the back side and the front. And this, and these are not glued down the tea light or this so that it can be removed. And then the back piece. And there's my tea light in there. I have a couple glue strings I need to get out of there. Okay, the only thing left, left that you would have to do is run um, your 
connectors, whatever you choose to do, in between in the holes. Um, if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. And that is uh, how this was done. I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial, and I'll see you next time.